Hi, I'm David Lebron, president of Rice University. We're here in one of the computer labs of Del Butcher Hall at Rice University, talking to Joe Warren and Scott Rickster, two professors of computer science, who along with John Greiner and Stephen Wong, pioneered our first MOOC, or Massively Open Online Course at Rice. And uh, I wanted to ask you, maybe we start with the, with the numbers, because this is a lot of the story about MOOCs, as mm -hmm. we understand it, a kind of fundamental change in, in higher education. And tell us about, first, how much work was this? How many hours did you have to put into <laughs> preparing an online course? A lot. <laughs> I think uh, you actually quantified it, right, Joe? Yeah, yeah. So we, I kind of kept rough track. We did a, the first version was in fall of 2012. And so Scott and I probably both spent about 1,000 hours getting the class ready to go. Um, we just taught a second round, which was in the spring of 2013. And I probably spent two to three hundred hours on that version there. And I think Scott's probably spent maybe a hundred a hundred hours on there. I think we're a little extreme by some people's standards because we took it really, really seriously. We were really stretching to see how, how well we could do in there. Well, you obviously did well since uh, last year, at least it was the top evaluated course, top evaluated MOOC, certainly top evaluated MOOC for Coursera. Um, how about the other numbers? How many students did you have? Um, so in the fall of 2012, we had about 85 students that enrolled, and about uh, 4,200 finished the class. Um, 82,000. Yes, 82,000, sorry. <laughs> 82,000, about 42, about 5% of them finished. Um, the last one, we had 107,000 and about uh, 7,400 finished. So we went from about 5% to 7% completion. And those are pe what people are seeing rather typical in terms of MOOCs on, online. Yeah, that's consistent with pretty much all the MOOCs. But even the number who finished was more students than you've had at Rice over yeah, your well, time. Yeah, way to think about it is that, you know, the, that there probably were out of those classes, we had like 11,000 finished, or about probably 25 to 30 that were serious about it. The rest of them were basically just coming in to kind of look at things and kind of, you know, see what was going on, but they weren't really serious. But yeah, as a lark, we were trying to figure out our teaching load last year, and I think our teaching load for last year was probably more than the entire campus, actually, if you, if you looked at it. So what, what did you take out of this experience? What were, the, what were the important things? And did you conclude that it's, is it important for Rice to be involved in this space? I think we both learned how to be better teachers because like Joe said, I think when we entered into this, we both agreed that we were either going to do this extremely well or we weren't going to do it at all. And I think that forced us to think very carefully about how we were teaching in a way that we hadn't before because we both sat and said, hey, hundreds of thousands of people are going to watch this we really want them to see bad teaching from us, right? Because that's going to be our reputation. So I think that simply the act of, of sitting down and very carefully considering how we teach, I think it changed, at least it changed me as a teacher, and it's had huge positive impacts on my classes here on campus. So I think, I think even if it doesn't matter what happens outside, I think it was valuable, at least for me, on what happens inside of Rice. When you talk about those valuable impacts, is it more effective learning or more enjoyable for you as a teacher or both of those? It's actually both. I spend more time interacting with the students because I've realized that there are certain types of things that you know, I can convey in a video or in some other way and that the thing that we were not able to bring as effectively online is those sort of one-on-one -on -one interaction with students. So I spent a lot more time effectively using my time to do the one-on-one -on -one interaction and leaving the other things to you know videos and, and stuff outside of class. One of the things we did is we, we for our on-campus version, we flipped the classroom. So what that means is that we had videos and machine-graded quizzes that were designed to be done before you came to class. You had to do them or you'd, you got a zero. So when the students walked into class, they were much more prepared than they were normally were when we taught this class in a traditional style. And so that allowed us to do a lot more with the students in class. They were very prepared there and I think that was the thing that was, for me, was the kind of the revelation on there that you could use this technology to improve the on-campus class in a way that was actually fairly substantive. I think I've also enjoyed the, uh, the comments that we received from people like, I've never heard of Rice before but this is a great place. I wish I had gone there. I'm going to send my kids there and things like that. So I do think that that's valuable for Rice in that way and that's, that's rewarding for me as well. Helps build the reputation of the university. I take it in a global way. Do you have a sense of where your students were located? Most of them are in the United States, but there's very large contingents in Russia, I think India, and, and maybe China. Yeah, Eastern Europe, there was a lot of students from Eastern Europe in there. It's a, very, it's a very diverse crowd. You get people from all over the world with all kinds of different backgrounds. And I think that's another thing that I got out of this class is I, I'm kind of used to teaching Rice students. And you know, you think about it, even though we're diverse, 
the, the, the kind of the space of the entire world is so much more diverse. So I get exposed to kind of a really wide range of people in the class. And what was your interaction with the students in this process? And, and what are the ways in which on-campus learning will continue to be very different from this kind of learning? The, um, I think the thing that I, my interaction that we did is we, our MOOC was unusual in the sense that we actually had a method for students to individually interact with both of us. Um, we set up a, a commercial help desk. It's a website where students could actually send emails with questions about the class and we would actually respond. I would spend most of my Saturdays during the class actually just answering stu student email inquiries and that's very unusual in a MOOC. One of the things that happened when we did this with so many people is that, for example, I would answer maybe a hundred questions on one of my assignments. And what I would see is there are things that I thought were really good. You get like 50 questions on the same thing, you realize, wow, I messed that up. You know, two people have a question, okay, maybe they just understand, but 50 people ask a question, you realize you need to do a better job. And I think, I already said it, but I think before, I think the difference early is that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Well, while we did have one-on-one -on -one interaction in the sense, it's very limited to have this email thread of conversation. And so I don't think, you know, you're ever going to be able to replicate, you know, sitting down one-on-one -on -one with a, a student or a small group of students the way that we can here. I think the bandwidth issues there, I mean, you know, you and I sitting here, we can have a conversation that's very efficient on there and that I think that's the value you're going to see on here is that somebody can come to my office and we can sit and we can talk and have questions and that you're, it's going to be very hard to replicate that in the near future. So how do you see that in the successful university of the future? What is the role of this technology going to be projecting, say, at least 10 years in the future, maybe 20 years in the future. You know, a lot of people have said this is just going to fundamentally change higher education. It's going to rearrange higher education. Uh, where do you see a university like Rice being positioned? How should we be thinking about using this te technology, investing in the technology? What is it going to mean for the residential campus and residential colleges? Let me answer this one. I'm going to give you an answer you probably didn't expect. The answer is I don't know. In fact, if I knew, I would be like going out, you know, and raising venture capital and making myself a mint. I think that for us, and I think for the university, it's important to experiment and innovate and be prepared to take risks because anybody who says they know where this is going is, my, my, in my opinion, kind of, you know, I, I don't really believe them. But I think that there's an opportunity here to try lots of innovative things, and I think a few of those will be very successful, but I don't know which ones. But for me personally, I just want to have a chance to innovate and try, and if it works, I'll do more of it. Scott, do you have the same view, or do you know the answer? I certainly do not know the answer. I agree with Joe largely, but I think that I would add that I, one, one component of this is going to be branding. I think that this is a way to get a university's name in front of a much larger and much more diverse, I think the diverse part is more important, much more diverse audience than we've had before. And so I think that we don't know what's going to succeed, but the people that are successful, I think this is going to be a part of a university sort of selling itself to the world. I mean, if you think about, for example, Georgia Tech really recently announced an online master's degree for $7,000. So there's clearly, there's going to be attempts to disrupt higher education. And I don't know if those will be successful or not, but I think that, you know, the, the idea would be to poise to be part of that process if there is disruption here. That, you know, we have a curriculum that's designed to be offered online. We understand how to do this in a, in a, in a way that makes sense, that lives up to Rice standards. And so, I, like I said, I can't really see where it's going, but it's an exciting time for me because I can go out and I can experiment and innovate. But I take it from what you earlier said. What follows from that is if we don't make use of this technology on campus and, and learn from the possibilities of this technology, we won't be as good on campus as we can be. And that that for you is really one of the principal reasons that you were interested in doing this. So I think that Joe and I had a conversation two, three years ago before we ever even knew about this. I think our interest is fundamentally making our on-campus education better. And this was a vehicle to try out many of the ideas that we had discussed totally independent. You know, we didn't even know what a MOOC was at that point. So I think absolutely this is about making the on-campus education better. Oh, well, that's great. Well, thank you so much. We've been here with Joe Warren, Scott Richner, our two superstars in this new online world of, of MOOCs, talking about the future of both online education and what it means for the great education that Rice can provide on our campus. And thank you for joining us for another edition of Campus Conversations. We look forward to being with you again in the future. <laughs>